Yeah, hi guys. Uh, as I was saying again, uh, Eric, is this smell thing. That's how they identify one another and how he identifies himself and me. Because he knows that every, every one of us, regardless of who we are, we have a little different smell. And, and so that's how uh, he gets to know me and I can come up to him in the middle of the night. Come here. Come over here. But you see our minds? Yeah. And that's, that's, the, that's one of the things that, that after all, if you work for somebody and he asks you to do something like this and you cooperate with him, you got it made. You got a thing made. Okay, now the same thing with working the horse. If he'll cooperate with me, we've got it made. But if he doesn't, we're in trouble. Come here. Come here. See, see, see you're new, see, so he wants to smell of you, see. He wants to know who you are. That's a good boy, yeah, that's a good boy. Yeah. Come here. But the, 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 in, in training horses, one of the things that anybody could, anybody in the world could train a horse. It's not one of those secrets. It's just uh, making the right things easy for them to do and the wrong things hard for them to do. And that's, that's the duck soup. Anybody can do that. I see him licking my hand here. That's salt. That's salt that he wants, you see. A lot of times we call a horse a colt until he gets to be almost four or five years old. And that's the old ways. But of course today we you know, think about the colt being yearlings or two year olds and so on. But in the old days, when I was out in the, out in the uh, cattle country, we called them colts co until they were uh, four or five years old because uh, uh, that's how we used them. We, we used them after they had some, some uh, uh, growth on them, some size on them. And what you, what you look for is a parallelogram, short up here and long under the, under the stomach. So the, uh, the, this is what they call a weather. When the weather on down like this, it, it slopes down. From the point of the hip, it slopes down to this joint, you see? Then he's long underneath. And this is what gives the horse that, that, uh, the agility and the ease of being able to turn and, and work under, underneath you. See the muscle on there? See, that's, that gives him that agility to, you know, lay down, what I say, and get down and, and, and uh, uh, get, on the, get on his front end. And then this hind end comes up underneath him, so that's the, where the power is. You see, it pushes him back and forth. And those are things that, that I think that uh, in looking at a good horse, you've got, to, you've got to have them if you don't. The color is incidental. Takoja, grandson, you know, I was born and raised on the Stunning Rock Indian Reservation, and my, my mother was a Sioux Indian woman, and my father was an Englishman that came over in the early, early days when they had that uh, uh, fellows brought up cattle from Texas in the 1800s, and uh, of course, when they got up into our country uh, and they wanted to have families, there was no white women. And so that's where I came from. My mother was a, the daughter of, a, of a, a man named Tipi Sapa, which means Black Lodge or Black Tipi. You have a certain amount of, of uh, discrimination that you gotta put up with, particularly if you're light colored in your Lakota, see? That is on both sides. Seems like the, the non-Indians, he wants to get you because you're a half-breed, and the, the full blood wants to get you because you're a half-breed. What I remember about